Hi and welcome back. In this video we're going to talk about how an airline manages its inventory of seats and allows them to be sold in their reservation system. So in the last video we created this sample fare structure and we said the airline forecast demand for each one of these fare products and then run some models to determine the number of seats to be sold in each fare class in order to maximize revenue. Once those numbers have been determined, the airline then loads them into their reservation system so the seats can be sold. And they've come up with a mechanism that ensures that higher fare seats will always be available to people who want to pay for them, even if they've underestimated the number of seats they should protect for that fare. So let's say their models tell them that they should allocate 40 seats to the Y class. They also call that the protection level. Protection level. So we'll just say protect 40 seats. That means that the airline believes that they can sell 40 seats at the highest fare and they want to protect those seats from being sold to lower fare customers. So they're going to set limits on the number of seats that can be sold in the lower fare classes so that they know they'll always have 40 seats available for the highest fare customers. And remember we said that the booking behavior tends to be that the lowest fare customers book first. So the airline needs to anticipate how many seats they'll need for these higher fare customers and set them aside so they're available when those higher fare customers book. Now there is always a chance that they got this wrong and there are more than 40 people who want to pay $500 for uh, a seat on this flight. Now they certainly don't want to turn away customers who want to pay their highest fare. So they need a mechanism to protect 40 seats for this class, but allow more seats to be sold if there are customers out there who want to pay for this product. And they use something called nesting to accomplish that. So let's take a look at an example. Let me page down here. So let's say we have an aircraft capacity of 100 seats and the airline wants to protect 40 seats, 40 of those 100, for their Y-class customers, so for the highest fare. Well, while they're setting aside 40 seats, they don't want to limit uh, the number of seats that can be sold in that class to 40. They actually want to allow up to the entire capacity of the aircraft to be sold at their highest fare. So the booking limit in this case for the highest fare would actually be 100. So this logic applies all the way down the fare structure. So let's say the airline determines they should protect 10 seats for the B class. Well, the booking limit isn't going to be 10. It's actually going to be all the seats that are left after they've protected for the higher fare customers. So in this case, the booking limit's going to be, we'll write it over here, 100, the capacity of the airplane, minus the 40 seats that were set aside for the Y-class customers. So 60 seats would be sold to B-class customers if they showed up. They only think, the only, only thinks that they're going to be 10 customers, They but they want to be able to sell more seats at that fare if they uh, if more customers arrive than they anticipated. And we can continue on. Let's say uh, the airline wants to protect 15 seats for the M class. Well, the similar, the same logic applies now. The booking limit is 100 minus 40 minus 10, so 50. So the airline would be willing to sell up to 50 seats in the M class. That is, 50 seats are left after they protected for the higher fare classes. And you would continue all the way down in a similar manner and until you get to the last fare class. And the way you get the booking limit for the last fare class, there's no protection level for the lowest fare class because you're not protecting that class, those seats from being sold to lower uh, fare customers because there are none. The booking limit for the lowest class is the capacity minus all of the um, protection levels above that. So 
um, uh, well, I'm not going to do the example, but you get the point. So in this way, using this nesting structure, the airline is able to make their optimization model results a little bit more robust. So if they have underestimated the number of uh, people who would want to buy these higher fares, they can still sell them. Now, of course, lower fare customers will tend to book before high fare customers. So it's very possible that when those higher fare customers show up, there will only be 40 seats because they've already been sold to the lower fare customers. So this is certainly not as good as getting the numbers right in the first place, but it does allow the airline to capture some of an opportunity that they might have otherwise missed if those customers do um, show up that they weren't anticipating.